The Canon 250D has been released as a low-cost, wallet-friendly DSLR camera, which is aimed at people who are looking to buy their first camera. It's important to remember this if you're a professional photographer or a seasoned enthusiast, because this is most likely not going to be the camera for you. But just because the Canon 250D is an entry-level DSLR does not mean that it lacks both performance and features. This camera is currently the world's smallest DSLR camera with an articulating screen. It comes with a 24.1 megapixel size sensor, giving you an impressive amount of resolution in your images. The Canon 250D has an optical viewfinder with a modest 9-point autofocusing system, with you being able to switch between the autofocusing points. It also has a continuous shooting mode of 5 frames per second. Outside on the body, you have a single SD card slot, and you also have USB, HDMI, and a microphone. The camera feels light and actually more like a mirrorless camera in the hand, and it's not surprising probably because of the weight. But it definitely feels more comfortable when you're holding it, and this is probably because of the shape of the DSLR body. This camera, the 250D, comes with a Digi 8 processor, which is also found on the M50, the Canon EOS RP, and the EOS R. This means that you're going to experience better image quality in higher ISO settings, and this is going to give you better noise and color artifact protection than, say, its predecessor, the 200D would. Also, because Canon has added the Digic 8 processor into the 250D, this means they have been able to add 4K as a video option. Yes, that's right, this little tiny camera comes with 4K. Before you get too excited, though, let's explore this a little bit more. It's important to test out the 4K on this Canon 250D to see how it performs, so let's jump in and test that out now. Okay, so this camera has 4K, which is fantastic. It's like 500 pound and it comes with 4K, which is just brilliant. But there are a couple of issues with the 4K on this camera, as you may have already heard. So let's take a look at them, shall we? For instance, right now I'm shooting at 1080p. I'm using a 24 millimeter lens. And as you can see, my face is nicely in the frame and it fits it pretty well. But look what happens when I switch over to 4K with the same lens. We now have, in 4K mode, far too much face for the frame. So using this 24mm lens that I'd usually use in 1080p, we come across this problem. We have a 2.4% crop, and that means that you're going to have to use a very wide angle lens to make sure that you get your, fr your face perfectly in the frame. So let's just switch over to something which might make it work a little bit better. Now I am using the 10 to 18 millimeter lens, which you can see that my face really nicely fits in the frame, and this is in 4K. Now I will say that this can be corrected, but there is another issue which people have discussed with this camera, and that means that the autofocus, which you usually experience as dual pixel, and you still do as 1080p, you don't experience that in 4K. So at the moment I'm in contrast-based autofocus, and it seems to be doing a good job, but I have noticed there's been times when I've filmed this before that it does seem to pulse a little bit and go in and out of focus. So it's probably good for studio-based work when you've just got a well-lit scene and you're not going to be moving around much, but not so good for vlogging. So the 250D has 4K, but with limitations. But really, what did we expect? I mean, after all, this is a budget DSLR camera aimed at new photographers. They were hardly going to reinvent the wheel for an entry-level camera, and the fact that it has 4K is still a great addition. With 1080p on the 250D, you have 60 frames per second, 50 frames per second, and 30 frames per second. Yes, I did just miss 24 frames per second off the list, and that's because the Canon 250D doesn't come with 24 frames per second at all. It's perplexing as to why Canon have done this. They did it with the EOS RP and now the Canon 250D. You do get a match recording time on the Canon 250D of 30 minutes. Now this might surprise some people, but when you compare that against one of the more expensive cameras on the market, which you only get 15 minutes, like the X-T30, then it just doesn't seem that bad at all. The Canon 250D comes with eye detection autofocus in live view shooting mode. This is an impressive feature which takes the autofocus up another level. And it's great to see this on such an affordable camera body. The screen on this camera is a fully articulating touchscreen, and Canon, in my opinion, still have the best, most user-friendly screens, which are ideal for studio work, vlogging, and any out-and-about video. Having a touchscreen is something you take for granted 
until you're using a camera which doesn't have one. And then you really realize what you're missing. Now taking this camera out and actually taking some photos with it was a really pleasant experience. As you would expect with Canon cameras, you get a really beautiful color science, which means you get accurate colors, like you can see here. And I was really impressed that even though the camera doesn't have a really high dynamic range, it really dealt well with these sunny harsh conditions where you had harsh highlights and deep shadows. Straight out of the camera, all of these images are JPEGs, and it really did a very good job. So the 250D is the successor to the 200D, one of Canon's best selling cameras. It costs around about £50 more, so what are you getting for your extra money? New eye detection autofocus, which is improved. You also get 4K video, and you're getting the Digicate, which is a better processor. This is going to give you more improved low light performance, but I will say the 200D has 24 frames per second in 1080p. That's right, the later camera is missing it, but the earlier model has it. So it really depends which is more important to you. You have both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the 250D, which means you can easily share photos from your camera to your devices, such as your phone, your laptop, and your tablet. Something that's really fun about this camera, and I'm really happy Canon did it, is they give this camera creative filters. This is great for someone getting into photography that wants to be creative and create different effects. You have quite a few different ones to choose from, including soft focus, fisheye effect, HDR, and plenty more. My final thoughts on the Canon 250D is that it's a great entry level camera, which is very user friendly and offers any beginner photographer a great performance in photo, video and autofocus. It's small, it's lightweight and making a great choice for a nice compact setup. Of course, it has its flaws, notably in the 4K limitations, but really there's nothing here that would steer you away from choosing it. I hope you've enjoyed this review on the Canon 250D. If you found it helpful, then you can always treat me to a coffee in the description or give the video a like, that would be great. If you're new here, I would love to invite you to subscribe to the channel and then you'll be notified of future videos. Look out for the next video in the next few days, which is gonna be another video on the Canon 250D showing you the best video settings to get the best video out of this camera. Okay guys, thanks for watching and whatever you do for the rest of the day, make sure it's a great one.